X-Men, the 90s animated show, Season 4, Episode 11 and 12, Proteus Parts 1 and 2, Thoughts, Spoilers for the show leading up to and including these two episodes. So before I get into it, in the description box there's a link to donate to the SAG After Strikers, please do so and a number of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So... Right, and yeah, um... So last time I was talking about the, the time travel episodes and I neglected to mention, you know, the... You know, so they do... They've so far on this show done two time travel stories that are very terminator e but in the you know in in both a time traveler travels back in his past in order to prevent the assassination of an important figure which will alter the future and prevent this horrible thing from from happening but in the in the first of these two arcs it's the the they're traveling to our present and you know mostly dealing with the the x-men that we know of the show where in this more recent one it was actually you know they're they're traveling to the present but not ours an alternate present and we spend time with alternate versions of x-men and then they go to our past not just the time travelers past so i appreciate the variety there so Proteus Part 1. So we almost immediately see Proteus' powers and their limits are explained not long after. And yeah, I really appreciate how, you know, you know, as usual, this is not like an evil individual. Is You know, Kevin has been isolated and is confused, you know. And... Yeah, we learn that Joe abandoned Kevin, which is legitimately just, yeah, really, really scummy. I'm not 100% certain I buy the redemption he gets in part two, but anyway. Really epic climax, and that brings us to part two of Proteus. In both of these episodes, they do a really great job using, like, you know, Basic, like Beast at one point says, the only limitation to Proteus' powers are his own imagination, which does of course mean that the only limitation to the depiction of Proteus' powers is the the imagination and also like how much time they have and such of the the writers and animators, and yeah, they absolutely deliver. And, yeah, so this episode opens with a very, very cool scene of the X-Men defending people as Kevin is attacking with the bell tower. And, yeah, like, this idea of, you know, he's the bastard son of a powerful person, yeah, there's a lot of that throughout history. You know, powerful people refusing to take care of offspring that they had you know, in, in this case, it's not, they, they were actually married at the time, that might have been pushed, you know, if they hadn't been, that might have been too going too far for a kid's show at the time, but he, yeah, he abandoned his only, he's abandoned his child, and yeah, sadly has happened a lot throughout history, and it's especially, you know, it's this thing of he's worried he'll lose power, if people realize the truth about his his bastard son, I appreciate that the you know the the long term effects on Wolverine this thing of he legitimately is struggling to accept the the fact that he felt fear and Rogue you know sees her own father in. Joe, which I quite appreciate, you know, in case any kid watching is like, I don't know, is it really that bad? You know, we empathize with Rogue, certainly by this point in the show. And, yeah, you know, Xavier notes, Moira has gone to do something. Oh, no. 
not something. And I, I do appreciate, you know, like this this fear of, you know, would, yeah, Mo Moira was just about to actually try to destroy Proteus using the sonic therapy. Which, depending on, you know, this this may be, like, I could see how showing that, you know, one one of the, t depending on which of the, of the Sonic Saturday morning cartoons, you know, certainly the, the one of them would be very effective for exposure therapy if you want to try to train someone to, to deal with really obnoxious, yeah. And anyway, the, the, um, I appreciate that Joe literally only ever, whenever he's giving a political speech, he's constantly bringing up his love for his kids. You know, it's, it, yeah, sadly very realistic. I, I, I don't know that much about, like, Scottish politics, but yeah, Scottish politicians, like, politicians all over the world, you know, they lie about their past, they pretend to be in favor of something, they don't actually... You know, they're not true to their word. And... Let's see. I appreciate that, you know... Like, at we, we, we saw early in part one that Kevin does have a potential, like, very human... Yeah, original human form. But the longer the, this arc goes the more he stay, stays in this monstrous form. And then here at the very end, he's able to go back to his human form, which enables Joe to relate to him. And Xavier uses empathy, as he's wont to do, and it is super effective, which, you know, and I, I quite appreciate that the, you know, the solution here at the end is not to put Proteus in a in a locked room again it's you know he he's sitting there like you know basically um playing a game i guess with uh, havoc you know it's it's human contact that he's been missing so yeah um a lot of great takeaways of this arc and given that, you know, Proteus can basically do anything just within, you know, there's a, like, there's a certain physical limit to how far away he can affect, but, yeah, it makes sense to give him two episodes to, you know, to fully, it's, you know, it's not that the story itself is so complicated that they couldn't possibly have told it all in 20 minutes, 21 minutes, but, you know, such cool powers, you gotta, yeah, spend a little more time exploring them. And I think that is about it. But yeah, we again see that the biggest threat to non-mutant humans is not mutants, it's the bigotry it's anti-mutant bigotry. That's what causes these problems and worsens them. So, yeah, I think that is everything. Um, based on when, like, I mean, so this episode, the, the flashback that we saw of Charles, he was participating in a war and like we know it's set after like 1959 because in the previous episode you know the time travel back to 59 he still had the use of his legs and here we see him lose his legs so does that mean he was fighting in Vietnam I guess that's why we really don't see very much of the fight like it's clear that they're in war but yeah that's that's probably a little too dark for for the kids to, to delve into Nam. Yeah, that is everything for 
this one. So I'm gonna do one more episode today. So uh, yeah, by the time I'm probably they're probably gonna look like they were uploaded at the same time. I'm gonna make them public at the same time. So yeah, for you it will have it will be like no time had passed at all. But yeah, catch you in a little bit. Make mine marble.